Welcome back to a playthrough of Panzer. Scenario 17, Land of the Giants. We're up to turn 8 uh, in our uh, playthrough here. And uh, we're starting to get into general engagement between the two sides. Uh, let me just show you where we are uh, with everything. And um, show you the commands. So with turn 8, um, the spotting here, we can see... Our units, uh, the Germans over here to the uh, to the east, are moving, or have moved into a position that can spot the Soviets moving up the road uh, over here, and they can start to engage. In fact, last turn, if you remember, we engaged a uh, IS-3 M45 up here and actually hit it and uh, knocked it out, um, rooted up there, which was the first kill for the Germans. Soviets continue to move up over here, um, and we were able to spot them over here. And then to the south uh, and to the center of the board, we have the whole town. And let me just zoom in here a little bit for you as well. In the town, we can see that our infantry have deployed into several of the buildings and taken cover uh, within there. Um, the plan is to use the Panzerfaust to potentially hold off this Soviet tank assault onto the town over here as well. And that's why the, all these units are marked with Overwatch uh, commands over here and a couple of fire commands. We do have some move commands on these units to the, uh, to the south, right in here. And they'll try to move up into the heavy woods to provide some flank support to the units in the town. Uh, <clears throat> also, we have our Panzers moving up the uh, up the track, and hopefully get there in uh, not this turn, but uh, the next turn, so they can engage. These guys will have to hold out as long as they can, and we're also going to have our uh, Jag Panthers um, and and Tigers try to engage at medium to long range the uh, Soviet tanks over here to prevent them from getting or attempting to get to the bridge, which will gain them quite a few points if they get there. So that's the plan. Um, we're going to see how it goes from here. Now, I did make one little logistical mistake with the, uh, the log file, and I did not start that at the very beginning, which would be rolling for the initiative, um, but started it one step in. I got a little excited in terms of... Uh, the Soviet attack, because the Soviets actually won the initiative, and uh, started the attack over here with this uh, recon unit, this BA-64, attacking the uh, the rifle unit here, 233, to try to knock that out before it can use its Panzer Faust on it. So uh, I'm going to bring up the log file. That's where we're going to be starting, and you'll see the results of that, and then we'll continue to walk through the uh, the log file. And I'll narrate the battle uh, for that turn and see uh, and show you how it went um, with that. So let me get that log file going and be back with you. Okay, so here we see the results of that attack by the uh, the recon unit over here. It actually got a uh, short halt um, action, and they were able to take a shot at the rifle unit and was able to suppress it. Um, so they've been suppressed. So that's going to really hinder them from shooting their Panzerfaust at them, but we'll see how that goes when it comes to the uh, to the, uh, to the German fire turn. So continuing on here, um, next we uh, are going with uh, checking commands for 111, uh, which is unit over here coming up to the town, which is an IS-2 M44 right next to it. They're going to do a command check. Um, and they actually get a short halt as well. And they're going to take a shot, looking to take a shot, um, uh, at the uh, infantry unit in the center of the town, this rifle unit in the center of the town. And they're also going to attempt a pinning shot, uh, which they don't get. So it's going to be a straight shot 
taking a regular uh, shot at it. They need to do an ammo check. Uh, all the Soviet units, or tank units here, do have to check ammo. If they've got high numbers, so it's generally um, generally going to be okay with their ammo, but there could be some low ammo and uh, possibly adding some, some negative DRMs to those shots. So they need to score a 50 to 81 to get a suppression. Uh, greater than 82 gets an effective hit. If they roll a 34, that's going to be a miss. Okay, so that was these units attacking across here. Next we go to 112, which is in that same hex. Um, they're going to get a move command, uh, which is going to be interesting because they can actually move up and potentially overrun them in the town, break into the building that they're hiding in, and uh, try to knock them out. So that will be interesting. And then 113 is going to do a command check. They also get a move. And they're going to do the same thing. So this could be fairly interesting if they overrun the, overrun the units and crush them in the buildings. So next we move on to, um, R1, which is, I believe that's R3 right there. And is that in that hex? Yeah, it was also in the hex as well. So they're actually going to take a shot, try to take a shot at, at 211. Um, they're using heavy machine gun. They're going to need a 65 to 91 to suppress and greater than 92 to have an effective hit. They roll an 86, so they actually suppress them. So that gets interesting as well, um, particularly with overrun, because it's going to be very tough for them to do any type of defensive fire against them um, in that hex, or advancing into that hex. So now we'll look at the command tank, uh, which is also in that hex. They're going to get an 8. They're going to be moving as well. So we've got three tanks that are going to be, or actually four tanks. The other one had a short halt, um, which will be moving into the town. So it could be interesting here. Let's see how it goes. So next we move on to the SU units down here. These are the SU, ISU uh, 122s that have moved up, um, looking to potentially fire at the, uh, the two rifle units. There's actually two rifle units in there, yep. Uh, and knock them out. So the first one got a move. Second one got a uh, got a move as well. So they're moving. So they're going to attempt to overrun. That might be tricky because they've got a fire on here. So hopefully um, they'll miss. But it's real short range. So it's going to be hard to hard to see if they hit um, over there as well. Now these Soviet units up here, of course, are still behind. Um, uh, are still out of range or, or not in a position to shoot on them. They are behind here, so they have nothing really to shoot at. These guys are out of range of the Jag Panthers down here, so they're not necessarily going to um, going to engage directly um, to fire on them. They're most likely going to be moving uh, to try to get to their uh, objective over there. So the German direct fire, though, they are going to try to shoot at them. So there's a range of 17, um, and he's going to fire at 122, which is this unit right there. They need a 33% chance of hitting him. They roll a 38, so that's going to be a miss. So that was uh, PJ-21, which was one of the Jag Tigers. And then second one, same thing. They need a 33%. Actually, roll a 31. They get a hit. Um, we check the location. That's going to be a 9. Um, it's going to be side hull, so it's going to be 31 to 23. It's going to be no variable penetration roll because that's greater than the, the maximums on there. So we check the damage. They roll a zero. They are brewed up as well. So the Germans are getting some good long, you know, medium to long range shots on the Soviet tanks as they move up over here. And now we move on to our next grouping here which are going to be these Jag Panthers trying to go after uh, this ISU M44 moving up the road here as well. This guy's moving, so that's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, so they need a 45% uh, chance of hitting them. They're all 25, which is hit. They check the location. is a 4. It's a turret front. Um, 37 to 42 
So there's going to be available variable penetration roll. They roll a 9 and they roll a 5, which brings the final penetration to 42, 40 to 42, uh, which ricochets off the, um, the hull itself. So that one was a miss. Next one, uh, same thing. It's got a 45% chance of hitting. Roll an 86. That's a miss. So that tank survives. We lost one there for the brew up, but uh, uh, the other one survived. All right. So next we move along to back over to the town, and we have 233. The one was suppressed before by the uh, uh, by the scout car, the BA 64. He's going to try to fire at them. Now he's only got a seven percent chance of hitting them. Uh, this is with the Panzerfaust uh, already. They roll a 38, and that's a miss. Okay. One thing I noticed in this I, I missed on, there is there should have been an ammo check um, for him, but it was such a low percentage that had no effect um, on him. And just <laughs> if there was more ammo check, he would have a 1% chance of hitting. So um, very, very low chance that he was going to get it. Next one is going to be 232 over here. Um, firing at SU-31, he needs an ammo check less than 8. Rolls a 4, so he's got good ammo. Needs a 56% chance of hitting them. Rolls a 17, that's going to be a hit. Checking the location, it's going to be 0. It's a track hit. So he hits them in the in the track, blows off one of the one of the tracks. Uh, we're going to check for bailout, 30 or less. Roll 55, so they stay in there. Uh, but they're immobile. So that's not good for them. All right, now we've got the second unit. Yeah, just rearranging here a little bit. Second unit is going to fire at SU-32. Uh, ammo check. Rolls an 8. So he's got good ammo. 56% chance of hitting them. Rolls a 99. That's a miss. So we got one hit um, out of uh, the two shots. Okay. Okay. Um, so now moving along to any type of uh, close combat or hand-to-hand, -hand, and there is none. Um, so for the movement, uh, this is where I made another small logistical mistake, and I actually moved the Soviets. Um, it should have been the Soviets moving second. Uh, but it would make very little difference, uh, particularly where it's going to count in the town. Um, because the town, these guys were either overwatch or uh, firing, so there's no movement here for them to, to move around. Um, we do have these guys moving up, uh, but they're just moving into the woods over here, so they wouldn't have any chance to affect anything. So um, in the long run, I don't think it mattered that the Soviets went first and the, um, the Germans went second, but again, a little flog of war for myself, um, which I corrected in later turns. I just got... I think a little excited to have all these overruns that are that are going to happen, and uh, wanted to get them get them moving here. So, anyways, here goes the Soviets. Um, Soviet movement. Let's see here. Here we go. First off, uh, this guy up here, this 121, actually hull down. Um, that's what I was just clicking through. So we actually hull down here in front to try to take on these other units um, that are around them. And then uh, we come down here, and we get to the Soviet tanks that are moving up for the overruns now. So first off, we've got 112 that moves up into there. Now, the uh, 211 is going to do his opportunity fire. He does his ammo check, roll the 6. He's got good ammo. He does have a 21 percent chance of hitting them for various reasons. One, uh, light terrain, movement, overwatch, suppression, etc. Um, so his shot, 78, is a miss. Uh, so he missed him. And now he can actually move in there and he's going to now over uh, attempt to overrun that unit in the town hex here. Now because he's in a town and he's in buildings, the uh, tank has to actually enter the building, which has us check to see if he has suffered any damage for entering the building. And with this, um, he is going to need, uh, that should be 
112, not 122. Uh, building entry check, he will be okay um, on 51 or greater, and he's going to have a plus 40 DRM. So really, he's going to just need a um, 11 or higher uh, to actually successfully um, crash through the building without any damage. So there was a 39, plus 40 makes 79. He's okay. So now we'll move into the um, into the uh, uh, overrun. So he's going to overrun to 11 in the building. Needs a 47 or greater uh, to be effective. All right. Now I didn't count suppression here because remember he's already suppressed. So second suppression means nothing. So it's just going to be greater than 47 um, to actually do some do some damage. We're all 68, so that scores an effective hit. So 211 is going to be reduced and suppressed, which he already is. So that was pretty good in terms of the attack. Now, what I've done is, is here, um, instead of moving him on because he's blocked by uh, terrain, uh, or blocked by units over here, um, I did not want him to get too far along through here because I want them to continue to pound away at uh, at these infantry because we really want to really want to try to knock them knock them out so we went back into his hex where he started from so they can overrun them the second time uh, from there and that's what I'm going to do for the rest of them there as well so next we move on to our next one the command tank he is uh, he's going to move nearest and fastest so he's going to overrun that same unit um, or attempt to he goes in for a building check same building check so anything greater than 11 he's okay he's okay and then he's going to need a greater than 41 or 47 to be effective it was a 19 so he just suppresses him which has no effect all right so he moves back in with the other tank and I debated on that, the, the moving out, because I do have the open hex. You know, some people may say, okay, what about this open hex right there? I could have moved them, you know, in through here to go one, two, um, two, three. Let's see, that would be... No, actually, that would just be four. He couldn't move there, so they have to move back. So I apologize, because it's three to move into the building um, on there. So they have to move back across there. They couldn't move across there. So... Yes, I, I probably debated in my mind, but then realized that the train movement um, prohibited them from continuing on, so they moved back. Anyways, moving forward here, our next one uh, is going to be, just cleaning up some of the commands, is the SU-32. I'm going to try to go into the buildings over here to overrun one of those units in there does a check he's got a plus 25 makes 70 so he's in good shape he needs a 66 or higher he's okay so he moves in and he overruns um i think 232 so greater than 25 to suppress greater than uh i should say greater than or equal to 25 less than or equal to 56 suppress effective greater than 50 greater than or equal to 57 he was a 90, so that's an effective hit on 232. So they will be reduced and suppressed. Now, here's where I debated. You can see I moved him forward because it was three to move into there, four to go into there. So I could go here, but that puts them you know, right in line with uh, um, the infantry unit. Now, obviously, I said the infantry is going to move up over here, but I just didn't want to leave them there because you also had... You also had 201 over here, the command unit that could that could fire on them. Now they don't have any Panzerfausts, but you know they could still you know um, attempt uh, close assault or something like that, or get some of the other units. So in in brevity, I figured it would be best to move him back. So he moves back over there like that. Um, of course, the other one was. Um, knocked out track hit so he couldn't do anything so now uh checking the command status for one r3 that's this guy up here 
and he is going to get a overwatch so he's not going to be doing anything now the su's up here they get some overwatch as well and a move so he moves out moving this way and then we've got a command check for uh 232 that's these rifle units up here we move on to next and they get an overwatch they get a move and he moves up into there and they're actually doing a quick march so they're going to actually roll for suppression and they are suppressed so they're going to be kind of stuck there okay next 233 which is this unit over here he's going to get a move as well and move into there the last one the command unit up the road they're going to move and move down here and do a quick march and they are suppressed as well in the quick march okay and then we've got uh su21 that's this unit right here he's gonna move as well and he turns and heads back down with his platoon and then 132 up here that's the other is3 he's going to move and he moves down the road right behind the other tank okay uh then checking some of these others over here the other reserve platoon is still staying put right there uh, they're not going to be moving um, actually, one of them is. Sorry, I apologize for that. One of them is. Um, they're actually going to try to flank around here to try to get over to this bridge, staying out of range of those um, Jag Panthers. And then the rest are not doing anything. All right, we've got a little bit more of uh, checking for oh yes nope we've got some more down here we do have these unrevealed units they are going to now try to move up a little bit and they're going to be spotted i believe nope not yet not spotted yet um coming into there now they're still not spotted and still not spotted so they actually made it in there without being spotted now number nine over here um uh, stayed put they didn't. Uh, they didn't move. They're covering the flank and potentially going to try to hit the uh, Germans moving up into the woods over here. Okay. So let me load up the uh, the German move and um, we'll go on from there. Okay. We're back as the Germans and now we get the German move and and the end of the turn. So now we see the German uh, infantry moving up into the woods, the heavy woods there. And now they're in position, hopefully to cover the flank and potentially attack over in here. Um, we will also have some of these units back here, as well as our other units uh, well behind move up. So first off is going to be our heavy tanks, the Tiger Twos and the Tiger Ones, continuing to move up the track. And they slowly make their way up. So they've got at least one more turn before they can engage. So these units are going to be in some serious serious problems while these tanks you know kind of pound away at them either overrunning them or just you know shooting blowing up the houses that they're in so hopefully these panzer twos can get up here and and counteract this pretty quick um but this is a great you know this is a great uh feel for how these big lumbering tanks worked they just did not have the uh, uh the engine power to keep up with the uh the infantry if they did they would possibly have ruled the day but you can see the problems logistical problems of uh of those heavy tanks so now moving forward with our drag panthers um to move them up uh as well and see they're fairly slow as well but they're going to try to move up to get better better position get into medium um, or better range over there and now the uh now we go into our adjustment phase, which we're going to be adjusting some turrets. So I'm going to zoom you out here a little bit so we can 
see that. I don't think there's much for adjustments. We do get some more full cover. Um, some more of the units over here go into full cover in the town itself. And then we've got suppression removal. Everything just kind of flips over. There's no real morale uh, as of yet. And um, removing all the move fire counters and then going to the end of turn. So there we have it. We're at the end of turn eight uh, with some, some heavy damage to the, uh, the German infantry. Um, they were able to knock out or at least track one of the uh, one of the SUs attacking them, but there are you know, four tanks, five tanks lined up to just pound away at them and overrun them. Now, they still do have Panzerfausts, but you can see very limited, and now that they're all suppressed, it's going to be tough for them to tough for them to hold out. The real help is going to be these tanks, which, as I said, we've got one more turn of moving. Then they should be in position to be able to shoot at those tanks and provide some support over there. To the north, we've had some good good luck with the uh, Panzer Jaegers. These Jag, uh, Panthers, and Tigers have taken out two tanks already, um, forced the other ones to kind of pull down or, or take a pause and try to shoot back at them. Um, so uh, they're having some good good work over here. But it's going to be interesting because we still have two more Soviet unrevealed units to come out. Uh, one's going to be an infantry, one's going to be another SU unit. We kind of know what they are. It's just who comes out where is going to be the question uh, on there as well. So... Hopefully you're enjoying. This is the end of turn eight. Uh, we'll move on to turn nine next and see what happens with this town. See if those infantry survive or they get wiped out. Um, we also see what happens with these Soviet tanks up here versus the Jag Panthers down there. And can the Tigers uh, make it up to the town to save the infantry, uh, the um, Grenadiers, uh, before it's too late? Thanks for watching. Hopefully you stay tuned for the next one.